changed to some extent yeah. from night to night, but does this show change more than most? Yeah. Um, yeah, this one, yeah, this one does change more than most. Um, you, come on. <laughs> John Joe, welcome. sections in it that are, have bits of improvisation in them. Necessity <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some just for fun. Uh, obviously, Ivan does quite a bit of, you change a few things every night. <laughs> yeah. It's actually a public <laughs> <night> session <laughs> The short answer is, yeah, I mean, I think if you came to see this tomorrow night, or you'd seen it last night, you'd, you'd, you'd actually notice a lot of different things, yeah. Can we talk a little bit, before we talk about the show itself, hello, welcome, please. <laughs> Can we talk a bit about the method by which you create shows? And I know you've spoken about this often, but... As I'm sure many people know, you don't turn up on the first day with a script. Don't turn up on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> you work with the actors and then you write the show as a result of that work. Is that the right way to put it? Or? Um, yeah, well, look, I mean, there's no, there's no big mystery to it. It's become a bit of a sort of USP thing, but it's really just a, a sort of. Uh, it, I, I just I don't have anything when we go into the rehearsal room, really, apart from an idea. And then. I write it as we go along, and it's not where it's not what people would expect. Maybe is it's not. I don't. I don't say all right. Well, here's the scene where Ivan arrives, and let's improvise this, and then we take dialogue from that. It's more a case that we do sort of quite lateral things, um, and we just find ideas. And uh, I, 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 it's very, it's very much to do. It's much more like um, bespoke tailoring. So, so like literally, it really depends on who the actors are. So, if any one of these actors had been different, I mean, if John Joe hadn't been in it, I don't know that Ivan would have appeared in it at all. Um, you know, if 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 Tamara hadn't, I don't know that we would have started it like that, and I don't think we would have had, you know. So, um, and then they'll add things to it, and then certain things will go on between them in the room, and certain things will. Um, I will observe certain things about them as people that I may choose to use or not use, or uh, you know. So, so it kind of comes about like that, and, and they, you know, fix lines and add lines and do things that I didn't expect them to do, and you know, and it, it's a sort of osmotic process where sort of things happen without you really always knowing exactly how, but mainly it's just me going back and sort of writing stuff and then bringing it in and then they, I just give it to them and they read it straight back to me and I, so they're my first audience on the material and I'm sort of put into the position of being an audience, hearing it for the first time, just being read. So I, I try and keep, uh, try and keep alive the, the idea of liveness and of audience and of what I would be feeling as an audience member watching this, so I, I can literally just go, well, okay, I'm sort of tired of this now, and I need to do something else, and I, we need something else to happen here. What the fuck is that? <laughs> 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 Shred of control over this. Um, so, now the actors, then. That, 
process that Anthony is describing when you go in not really knowing what you're going to do. Does the work then proceed in an atmosphere of calm, confident assurance, or are you wrapped with terror and panic? What's it like as a present to man? Um, well, for many weeks it is quite calm and chilled, and then in the final couple of weeks, as the material starts to appear, and there's no time to sort of deal, you know, deal with it in a conventional way, then yeah, you get more and more nervous. But uh, there was like weeks and weeks where we didn't really sort of feel like we were ever going to do a show. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that fair? Is that how you all fair? Yeah, like one day come in and, and Anthony say, you know, how do you, how do you feel about, you know, transcendental meditation? Maybe, maybe <laughs> this is something that we could do together as a company, you know, and uh, so we did that for a while. And then... <laughs> then and then another, he said, I need more. <laughs> I talk too much. We need to bring the actors things they can play with while I'm talking. So we suddenly had Play Doh and jigsaws <laughs> and coloring in so that when we were, so that when we, when we were talking intensely about a scene that it, it, it you know, it, it can get very cerebral and get you out of your bodies that we would kind of, uh, we would continue to kind of, I suppose, use ourselves creatively. And, it's kind of things like that, very lateral, as he said, or a, a musical jam, where we, which lasted. We long? had a two-hour <laughs> jam session. <laughs> well, at one point, it was four recorders. What was the song? <laughs> well, but when, for me. Expected, when you when you first meet Anthony, he kind of prepares you for the worst. Things like you're really gonna hate me by the end of this, and <laughs> I'm gonna make you do awful things, and so you kind of come in and you're like, okay, this is gonna make us do something awful, and then it doesn't happen on day one. So you come back in on day two, it's like he's gonna do something awful, <laughs> <laughs> and then that doesn't happen, and then you get to like three weeks, and you're like, oh, okay, and then and then you get given like scripts and then. <laughs> The first week we turned up and um, I think it was the morning of, of, of day two, um, Anthony told Matt that he brought a play in and said, it was like a 50 page play and said, it was something, he said, look, this is a play you're directing these actors in and turned to the stage manager and said, okay, I want you to invite the whole building of the Royal Court. There's going to be a public showing to the Royal Court staff this Friday. So the first week was Matt being our director um, all week, and Anthony would slip us pieces of paper with certain instructions. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't make it easy for Matt to do that way. But, um, so the first week was rehearsing a whole, a whole different play. Mm. Mm. But have I died? Have I died? Am I, am I a ghost of my own? <laughs> I suddenly got this feeling like I'd die. <laughs> no, it's true. I know. I just I was telling you how I felt right along. <laughs> I was feeling like, what if I've died? People you know, talking about me after I've died. <laughs> so, sorry, no, go on. <laughs> that leads on to the question about whether, the, uh, whether Max, the maniac director, is in some sense a self-portrait actor. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty concerned about how people will feel after his death. Yes, he is, but aren't we all a bit? Um, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but they all are, to an extent. Mm -hmm. I mean, they all of them, to some extent, are a little bit me. But yeah, yeah, I mean, Maxim is like the... Yeah, Maxim is in many ways the worst elements of of my ego, and hopefully, hopefully everybody can see something of their ego in him. It's that just that completely, you know, he's got no filters, he's got no, you know, so there's the places your ego goes to, and uh, and uh, yeah. So I mean, yes, there's a, most of my plays on some level are self assassination. <laughs> yeah. There's usually a character who's who's just an awful prick, and that's. That's kind of me, yeah. <laughs> but there's little bits of me in all of those characters, I, I think. I should really stress that 
Uh, it was quite important to, to me from the beginning because a lot of people said, where's the satire in the film industry? But I've, I've got to tell you that I have really had no interest in making satire about the film industry. It is meant to work on a kind of metaphorical level. So, uh, you know, in my mind all the time, it was really about the idea of, of trying, you know, the director is a metaphor for just trying to keep control of your own life. And at, at one point he does <coughs> tip the hat to that and says, you know, I, I don't, I'm, I don't recognize any of my work. I don't, you know, so it is, it is, um, they're all, they're all kind of slightly metaphorical characters. Um, so I hope that comes across on some level. Is it, is it, um, I, I can't make up my mind about this, but it, it has an element of cynicism in it about acting and performance and what that is. Do you, do you recognize that, R Richard, do you think? <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is, and then there are other things that are quite, um, you know, complimentary about the whole idea of trying to put on some kind of a performance or trying to make a piece of art. Or, and you know, there's, there's two sides of it. One, one side of it is that it's incredibly egoistic, and the other side of it is that it might actually have an impact on somebody and is therefore worthwhile doing. And I think we're constantly kind of jostling with those two things, you know, the battle of your own ego and how that affects how you... <laughs> And then that, whatever that other idea of the pursuit of making art is and how, I don't know, I suppose true or whatever you can be to doing that. I think there's, I, I think there's that in every actor, definitely, and probably in every artist. Um, yeah. Well, again, you, again, you, I mean, it's, uh, I, I sort of a few, I, I used to think, oh God, I, I I can't bear the idea that my life will become so myopic that I'll end up writing about actors and directors and things. So I really tried not to do that. And then just recently, I've noticed that it's strangely not as alienating, I think, for people, because I think it, the, the idea of an actor as a metaphor for all of us is now m more relevant than it used to be. It doesn't feel as indulgent. To me, it doesn't feel as indulgent. I could be completely wrong. but. It, it, it feels like we all sort of understand but now with the fact that we all have kind of multiple identities and 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 multiple lives in a sense, you know, in terms of different careers and all of this. I think we're all sort of actors in a funny sort of way. So there's something actually quite metaphorical now about the industry in a way that wasn't true, I think, maybe ten years ago. And um, you know, that that was that was otherwise I don't think I would have I would have gone there. And, and the element of Emotional manipulation, like what are what emotions are real? You know, what do you really feel about something? When are you acting? When are you? Um, so again, that's all part of the metaphor. So it's, it's, it's much more than I me mean, wanting to say something about actors in, in, in particular. You know, but about hopefully about all of us and the different roles we uh, adopt in each other's lives and how we act and respond to each other. You just say, by the way, this is Gemma Fairley here, who's my associate director on this, and was also my assistant director. <laughs> I have to feel the days when I'm at home writing. Because ultimately it's about writing a play, and there are times when really I should be in the room where I'm just sitting at home trying to get the play right, you know, and, 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 uh, and this was quite a tough show to write, actually. I, I went right down the wrong path with a big part of it until really near the end, and I couldn't figure it out. And I really thought I'd sort of messed it up until I figured it out, really, at the, really kind of at the last moment. So Gemma fielded a lot of that stuff. She was also my assistant director on a show called Realism that I did years ago. Um, so that's Gemma. So she does deserve a bit of applause and was responsible for all that. <laughs> which is, and perhaps I'll ask you, Genevieve, if I may, first, which is there are a, a number of times during the play when you appear to be making each other laugh. <laughs> For real. And Anthony 
you're saying that when you're acting and when you're not. I just wonder to what extent you're really making each other laugh out there. Well, um, <laughs> if you looked at the script, there are a number of allowances that Anthony so kindly made, does me for my character, where Uber laughed or Uber smiles. So it's a bit like he's like, okay, you can laugh in that moment. But I think if we're talking about um, the difference between performance and reality, you know, ultimately, we, I can only laugh when it's actually funny. Um, otherwise, I have, a, I have a really bad fake laugh. There are moments when you see me eating a melon, and I am generally eating that melon because I'm trying not to laugh because I know exactly what he's about to say. I have a whole of my immature sense of humour. That's the end of the line. So I do actually laugh when I'm going to be the actor and funny as opposed to either the character. Um, but it's in context. So but, it's in, mm -hmm. but it's in context, so it's... It is it's in context. context. I mean, John J. fell over last night uh, <laughs> during that scene, and I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Careful instruction in a play when it says she laughs or he laughs, you know, because the accent and oh Jesus, you know. Um, so in in that in those moments or in the moments, for instance, with Matt at the end of Act mm. One, mm. where they have to really laugh as a bonding kind of thing, then that is something that is improvised. So that's never the same every night. They are genuinely, in order to get there, which is right is the right beat in the script. They're trying to do things that will make each other Yeah, yeah. without laugh. forcing it, which is really hard, because you do something one night that works and you know you can't try to do it again. Yeah, so we're not um, totally so it's, it's, so it's, it's really strange. You're, you're trying to... Um, you're waiting for something to happen, really. And, and me and Matt, that's the game we're playing, just to keep a bit of playfulness and see if something can happen where we get to the point where we find it funny and so that we're doing a genuine laugh. Mm. But what happens is the audience recognise a genuine laugh when they see one and, and they join in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's kind of... So it's not... It becomes infectious. It becomes infectious. Um, and it's, not, it's an alliance. So you, you mentioned realism there a moment ago, which also, if I remember rightly, had a very dramatic scenic change very, very late on um, with the gauze that came in and everything was different. Is, is that a... Is that a particular interest of yours? Because that totally unexpected coup de théâtre at the end of the show is—is is that a signature of yours? Hmm. I hadn't thought so until you said it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I guess. I mean, you know, I suppose uh, the, there was, there's always been formal reasons for them. Mm. I mean, there were different reasons. So, well, the dissociation realism, they were both to uh, recontextualize what you've seen before it, whereas this is something slightly different. Mm. In fact, I always knew we were going to do that at the end, and that dictated a lot of what we do before that. That's why there isn't any color on the set, and there isn't any, but we really went for the kind of base, most basic set we possibly could before then because I wanted that, Im that image at the end to arrive with as much visceral impact as it, as it could. Terrific, thank you. Um, we, we, we don't have a great deal of time, but I'm anxious to give you a chance to ask questions if you have any. If I could have a little bit more light in the auditorium, that would be very helpful. Um, thank you. And if you would like to ask a question, please raise a hand. Hello. And, and someone is going to bring a microphone to you. And he is the furthest possible point of view. Nonetheless, here it comes. There we go. I wonder what the audition process would be for something like this. Is there an audition process for you just that you go, oh, I work with him, her, or how, how does the casting audition work? <laughs> There wasn't one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't audition actors, really. 
I just either I either know them or have seen them in something else before, or I just sort of get a feeling like, okay. <laughs> spend a great deal of time convincing them not to do this, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because it is, I mean, it's, it's an incredibly brave thing to do as an actor. And it's, it, you know, it's extraordinarily exposing and incredible in a way that so many theatre processes are not. And he will spend at least an hour, two hours, talking to an actor going, you really don't want to do this. <laughs> this is going to be really tough. Um, and the actors that can survive that are brilliant and turn up on the stage being brilliant. But it, it, it is sort of a, a, a process of explaining to them how hard it's going to be. And, then once people, and I work with a lot of the same people, you know. Mm. Um, no, nobody here, what's unusual about this cast is nobody here had done the full thing. Um, John Drew and Richard and I worked together on other things, but just but smaller scale things. But nobody else had actually done this thing, which was ambitious perhaps uh, on some level. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't audition. I sort of trained as an actor, and it's a really humiliating thing auditioning. And, and um, I, I hate. I always, I always want to give the part to every actor that comes in. So if you <laughs> know, I do have to audition, I, I'm always sort of at the end of it. I'm sort of going, yeah. And I, I'm, in my head, I'm going, yeah, they totally can play this. Absolutely can play this, you know. And I'm sort of, and they're saying, yeah, well, I'll see you. Later. And they say, yeah, I'll see you. Soon. Yeah, I'll see you soon. And then they go out. And then the next actor comes in. and They go, yeah, but they're quite good as well. <laughs> as well, actually, you know. And who was that other person that we saw? You know, so I, 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 it's a really dreadful, humiliating thing, so I try not to do it uh, if I can help it. And sometimes I just take a punt on people because I meet them and I sort of have this slightly arrogant thing, like I feel like I can sort of tell a good actor by, just by talking to them. I'm probably deluding myself, but it's been all right so far. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yes. Down here. Hello. Um, <laughs> the microphone might actually take you down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead and leave it here for a second. Um, sort of along the same lines of not doing a casting process, how much of the characters were outlined before you wrote the show? Like, did you say, I want this actor to play the role of the over the top actor, I want this actor to be the producer. Um, yeah, I, I usually, um, I, I sort of, the, the first thing I think about is like the kind of, uh, again, it sounds a little bit wanky, but it, it's, it's sort of like having a palette of colors, you know, you sort of go, well, I don't exactly know what I'm gonna paint, but I know I want it to consist of these colors. Um, so yes, I mean, very nominally, I, I knew Matt was going to be the director, I knew Amanda was going to be the producer. I wasn't quite sure what Richard was <laughs> do. Um, I pretty much, when I decided I wanted to do the, the Ivan character, John Joe was a very natural choice for Matt. <laughs> For, for, but my idea for Tamara and Genevieve, I, I wasn't quite sure. I thought my mind changed a bit here and there about what Genevieve would be and what Tamara would be. So, but I, I always have to know that they will fill a certain place within it. You know, um, like I think if you took any of those characters out, I think it would feel very incomplete. You know, so. But I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm misremembering. I don't know. That's right. That's right. Do, do you feel as if you're playing versions of yourselves in the show to some extent? No <laughs> 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 I mean, it's really weird. See, when you listen, no, I mean, listen on stage or backstage, I hear what other characters, some of the words they say, the sentences they say, and I think, oh, that's you. And, or, and then I think of the fact that, you know, things I say, like, oh, there's no coincidence, I say that quite a lot. And it doesn't, it, there's lots of things that pop up constantly that are, 
about the mask you wear or what's beneath the mask, and, and that's, that's, I think, what, what I think my character is all about, what's beneath the mask and, and what the mask is, and that's how I view it, but it's, it's totally personal. I, mean. I think certain part, aspects of our characters get exaggerated in the process, so, I mean, I've always been quite a blunt and direct person, so I know that that was kind of accentuated in my character. Um, I also know that, hello, I'm deaf, so um, it's kind of an obvious thing. You know, in, it's not going to be hidden, so it, it's been quite interesting seeing how different characters react to, I don't know, either deafness, because it is the thing in the room. And the nice thing, actually, is that um, my character isn't the call of the deaf girl, which is actually quite often the case that deaf people are quite characterised as quite quiet and quite invisible and quite, um, I don't know, uh, subdued almost. And it was quite nice to be able to play the constant <coughs> version of that. Mm. Um, whether that is me or not, I don't know, but certainly I think I have a tendency to project quite a lot of confidence yeah. um, about being deaf because so I think my character was very much reflective of that. But what's interesting, I think, because I just thought this today, was that actually some of the scenes between two of you, although you're both speaking, they're almost like silent movie scenes in a way. There's something that like a bit like, you know, you remind me slightly of the of, of, of the women in like a Charlie Chaplin film or something, or, and, and his character. There's something quite... Is that compliment or...? <laughs> <laughs> Unconscious, but I think what's quite nice is that there is. I did try to uh, have lots of different, like lots of different uh, types of scene, and because on some level it's a little bit about art and about art attempt to capture something indefinable. So there are like little moments that are like there are like some scenes are a little bit like farce and there are some scenes that are a little bit like a silent movie and there are some scenes that are a little bit like uh, um, you know towards the end it gets quite choppy like film editing like it becomes more of a film as it goes on and then there are some that are slightly Jacobian and then there are some that are slightly absurd so I did try to as reasonably seamlessly as I can some people will just go away it's a fucking mess but I did try to sort of weave together as many different styles as I possibly could without it upsetting the apple cart. And what's sort of nice about that is, is that... I'll tell you where I was fucking up, okay? Because this is quite interesting. This is where I was going wrong. <coughs> was because I was trying to manufacture a, 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 a love affair between Matt's character and Tamara's character, right, Natasha. I thought that they could be a very complex, nuanced, weird relationship about two people who were just so dysfunctional. Some, one person who was uh, lacking empathy and, and, and couldn't feel getting involved with somebody who, who had to control the feelings of the people around them, and it was quite, quite nuanced. And I watched it happen very incrementally and in small ways and cerebrally and philosophically. And so I was working at that, and but then. The scenes between the two of them took on this life that I never expected and became... And because they are so graphic and so simple in a way, those characters, you know, they're so... There's something so... Uh, even, though they're, even though he's an insane character, you know, there's something, <laughs> there's something very honest and direct and powerful about that that plays... I guess what I mean is it plays like a silent movie. It has that same effect. There's something naive about it. But... Yet it actually, for me, and it seems to for audiences, really works. And actually, um, at the same time, I was trying to do this really nuanced, complex little relationship between these two people. And I just felt that I, eventually what I realized was, you were ne A, you were never going to outshine this relationship. And B, it was very difficult there to adjust from this very classical, almost fairy tale like relationship to a more nuanced development of that. So those two things sitting alongside each other weren't working. I, I, like I don't think the audience could 
I, I think it would be very difficult for an audience, and it was certainly difficult for me to make my brain shift there so I would understand exactly what I was seeing. I don't know if that, even if that makes any sense, but... Um, so when I realized that and pulled off of that, the, the tomato thing just went, okay, it's not going to be a love affair, it's not going to be all of that. Um, then that all started to work. And that was very late on. I mean, that was like very late on. And there was this thing bugging me and I was like, I can't figure out what this is. So either I lacked the skill or it would never have worked. Um, but that was interesting. But again, that's, that's the thing that makes me sweat because I thought like there's a whole there's a whole thread of this that I'm, I, that's not working, and I'm, I've fucked it, you know, so. Thank you. Um, we have time, yes, sorry, over there. <laughs> over there, side. Sorry. Uh, sorry. I'm quite loud, you might be able to hear me. I, I don't know why. Yeah, everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, if you, uh, when you write something like this, which has a structure, but you're also kind of embracing the chaos that other people coming into it can offer, how easy is it to call that moment when you stick to the idea that you had when you were writing it, and and then when do you embrace the chaos when you were rehearsing? So this is about how you integrate the chaos that you. I'll turn this one over to the other person. I think when he decides. That's it. Yeah. When do I embrace the chaos? I don't think it's much when I embrace the chaos. When did they? <laughs> when did the actually embrace it's, it? Sorry. It's quite quite a complex negotiation, really, and and. You know, like you, you're completely involved in the creation of not just your character, but what happens in this play. So there's a constant conversation with Anthony and amongst ourselves. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if there is a line in the sand where it becomes this way or that. I think it's a constant kind of. Um, Thing. And, and actually, you know, I mean, the changes were huge the whole way through. Uh, can we talk about, can, can I say about the shooting? The deaths. Mm, yeah. yeah. Like, the deaths changed. So even the, the, the person that got shot changed. Two, I think two nights before Yeah. 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 Really, so, it changed. And it was huge so. changes. And, and, it, and it's a very complex kind of, Negotiation, but at, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, Anthony's done this a million times, and he knows that he, he can see when he watches it what needs to happen, and so you know, you just trust that, and and um, if you know, yeah, I guess if there's a final say, it's it's that, isn't it? It's like, okay, we have to do this now for it to make sense. I mean, I don't know why, really. I mean, I do. I, look, I understand it from the actor's point of view. I do, but um, I, 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 you know, it's a live thing. I mean, again, I, I think you know, theatre is a live art, and I'm not sure why it ever needs to stop changing, and why we couldn't be shooting somebody else by the end of the run. <laughs> why not? You know, it's there and then it's gone. You know, rather like oh, on the press night, a moth. Got into oh, this, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought one more, and it was landing on people on stage on the press night, and I thought oh, the shit, the whole show is going to be derailed by a moth, and how I was that, and it fucking died on stage. <laughs> lamp, it banged itself off a lamp and died. <laughs> and I thought this is kind of everything, isn't it? This is brilliant. This is brilliant and terrible, you know. Um, so, you know, why, should, why, why shouldn't it? Change? I think it's probably fair to mention the last time that you were in was about a week ago, and the last time that the script shown was about a week ago. <laughs> and we were done tonight, so. <laughs> 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 Tomorrow, we might. There's a point where you have to stop, obviously, but then. <laughs> Well, I don't see, you know, I'm not sure I see why. I mean, you know, it is, it is an ephemeral thing, and we, and we have to embrace that, I think, about it, because otherwise, what, what makes it different from a film or TV, essentially, you know, when you're just trying to go through a, yeah, I mean, I know there is more power to just people live on a stage doing something, and that is something in itself, but there is way too much uh, the, the feeling that, you know, people really try to get it right for, Press night. I mean, I do as well because I'm fairly that is often the record that exists. <coughs> um, 
although I'll change it after press night, you know. Uh, um, but actually, what's the point in all of that, you know? I think people respond to the liveness of it. And people, in, in, in those first few days, when we really were changing things all the time and mucking things around, and I, I know it was sort of hellish for the actors, but in a way, it's, 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 it's more about, like, if you just kind of accept that and we contextualized it, and if you just sort of go with it, and the audience really enjoyed that feeling, you know, because you know that, and hopefully this is true of every night. This, I mean, the show that you saw tonight, I mean, nobody else is going to see that show. I mean, significantly, you know, lines will be different, different stuff. There are scenes that are largely improvised. They've got a framework of them. So nobody's going to see the show that you saw tonight, you know, and not even... Not even, you know, not even that close to it, you know. Um, so that's a good thing, right? I think. Yeah, I think so. The staging changes as well because a lot of the time it's not locked down exactly where people. And because we didn't rehearse. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, all of that is locked down, and you know it's like set in concrete. But there is something quite wonderful about just not knowing when you walk up to the stage where we're really going to be. <laughs> well, to be fair, I don't, I, yeah, I mean, you know, we don't, great, actually. we say don't rehearse, but I mean, we rehearsed pretty much as much as I feel like we need yeah. <laughs> pretty much as much as I feel like we need to, I think when you start locking in an actor's movement on stage, you start to lock in their emotions, you start to lock in their emotional responses. Um, so they're a wonderful thing, I mean, you know, I think, I think, so for me, directing is very much just about giving as little as you need to give somebody to get them to where it, it is. It's become a whole different, really elaborate thing now, directing. I mean, understandably, because, you know, we need to justify the existence of, of, of directors. But, you know, <laughs> the, 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 no, but the thing is, when we really, you just, you just need to give an actor just enough to get there themselves and it's so much better if they've got there themselves if they've found those things and they can then so yes every night the blocking can be different so it's like it's not like the most difficult thing in the world to go in and precisely block something it just takes to, but i i just don't really agree with it it's not something i i think is very good for the, for the show thank you very much indeed